Unless you've been living under a rock, you likely have at least some knowledge on the Minecraft mob votes. While now a staple of the Minecraft live event that occurs yearly, many in the community likely don't know about the long history of the mob vote, as well as the overall negative reaction to the vote that happens nearly every year. In fact, in a recent interview from June 2024, the official Minecraft team spoke about the mob vote drama and finally provided an official stance on it. That people really, like they liked the idea of, of getting to contribute to what we make in the game, but I think the problem is... So what mob votes have actually happened? Why is the community sentiment around mob votes almost always overwhelmingly negative? And why hasn't Mojang implemented the main feedback that would fix this negative reaction? Before we dive into that and the specific mob votes, it's first important to get an understanding of what a mob vote actually is. Every year during the Minecraft Live event and formerly the Minecon in-person conventions, a vote takes place, generally with three possible mobs to pick from. The mob that wins the vote would be confirmed as an addition to the game, typically added into whatever large update was being announced at that Minecraft event. However, the other mobs that didn't win the vote would be confirmed as never being added to the game, being completely cast aside. Side. And as of the writing of this video, five total mob votes have occurred. However, in 2018 and 2019, instead of mob votes, Mojang did biome votes instead. These votes were technically for biomes that would be confirmed to be updated with new features. But each possible biome choice had a biome-specific mob as a part of it, and thus grouping them in with the mob votes was a fair compromise. So armed with an understanding of what a mob vote actually is, we can now answer the question of what people disliked about all the votes in general. General. The community's main gripes can be split into two categories, as highlighted by the biome votes, funnily enough. Those being the camp of why not all three, and those in the camp of my mob didn't win. And later, we'll be looking at Mojang's official response to these complaints. These aren't too hard to explain. In terms of people sad that their mob didn't win, you can simply look at the vote breakdown to understand why certain votes were more controversial than others. As you would expect, votes where the winning mob didn't even get 40% of the vote meant that a massive majority of players didn't get any mob they voted for, and thus some were upset by said vote. For the votes where 50 to 55% of the votes were cast for the winning mob, the community didn't seem to be nearly as perturbed. But the main thing people didn't appreciate about these votes has always been the overall overall format. One mob makes it in, and the others are gone forever. A large chunk of the fan base continuously has expressed a sentiment of, hey, why not all three? Typically, these people view Minecraft's updates in general as being slow and lacking features, and so their main gripe is an accusation that Mojang is lazy and just doesn't add enough content. Soon, we'll look into this argument further, explaining Mojang's position on the topic, various developer replies to it, and possible solutions to the problem that Minecraft might potentially be able to fix future mob votes with later on in the video. But for now, let's take a more in-depth look at the history of the mob votes chronologically. We'll look at mobs in the vote, arguments in the community around the vote, the final mob that won, and of course, dive into each vote's public reaction. The first vote Minecraft did was in a rather different format than what they've now landed on more recently. Instead of hype videos to explain what each mob would be, instead we get four pieces of concept art along with a brief description of what they might do from Jeb. And yes, I did say four mobs. That's because this was the only mob vote that had four mobs in the initial list, meaning that the vote was even further split than the votes of today. But what four mobs were in this vote? First, there was the barnacle, a deep sea creature with somewhat squid-like visuals. It would use its long tentacle to pull players down into the water in order to drown them. There was also the phantom, a winged menace of the night, and the ultimate winner of this mob vote. This was described as a flying creature that attacks players who haven't slept in three or more days. There was the great hunger, a dinosaur-like large beast most akin to the sniffer, more on that mob later. This great hunger would camouflage itself and eat both mobs and items using its massive mouth. It would have been able to be used to remove enchantments from items, which was later instead implemented into the game via the grindstone block. Finally, there was the wildfire, a blaze-like mini-boss. It would surround itself in large, shield-like pieces that would keep it protected from attacks. While this mob wasn't added to Minecraft, it does have multiple appearances in the Minecraft Dungeons game DLC. Votes for the mobs all came in incredibly close, with three total rounds of voting. And across all the votes, the Phantom barely edged out the victory 
with a 1% margin, 2% margin, and 4% margin, respectively. In terms of public reception to the vote, at this point, while some overall disappointment was expressed, we had yet to hit the massive anger that current mob votes often experience. And thus, soon after the vote concluded, the Phantom was added. Unfortunately, the overall community opinion on the mob didn't particularly improve, as Phantoms proved to be extremely annoying. And due to not dropping anything much of use, except for an ingredient used for potions, a feature often neglected by many, Phantoms were relegated to a mob everyone did their best to avoid. So while the vote itself didn't go too poorly, the mob that ended up getting chosen was most certainly the annoying one of the bunch, at least for the average player. And thus, a general sense of regret over the choice could be felt across the community. Now I mentioned biome votes. These were the next two votes that Mojang did, and as mentioned earlier, each potential biome update would also have a specific themed mob that would go along with it. For the first vote, it was between the taiga, savanna, and desert biomes. The desert would have palm trees, oases, and the meerkat mob added to them. The savanna would have had baobab trees, as well as two mob types, termites and, the main one, ostriches. But the ultimate winner, the taiga biome, was selected, adding sweet berry bushes, campfires, and of course, our adorable foxes. These were incorporated into Minecraft 1.14's Village and Pillage update, which technically updated all three biomes, with new village types that would generate in all of them. Now, the second biome vote was rather similar. This time, it was a choice between the Badlands, the Swamp, and the Mountain biomes getting updated. Badlands would be getting tumbleweeds, flowery cacti, and a vulture mob. Swamps would get boats with chests, a new sub-biome known as the mangroves, and the frog mob. And mountains would get powdered snow, improved terrain generation, more mountain subtypes, and the goat mob. Ultimately, the mountains won the vote, very narrowly followed by the swamp. But if you're knowledgeable about Minecraft, you might recognize that as part of the wild update, swamps also ended up getting updated with the features listed in that previous vote. This was because unlike the mob votes, where the losing mob would be lost to time forever, the biome votes did not feature this same restriction. And with the biome vote being so close, Mojang seemed to have decided to just add both. And how did the community receive these votes? Well, as you might expect, with the format choice, as well as specifically the Taiga vote being so lopsided, these were by far the most well-received votes compared to any other votes held, past or present. The votes themselves were rather substantive, with an entire updated biome, various blocks, features, and a new mob for each option, and seriously, Mojang delivered. The hope that updates would still happen to the losers of each vote helped people not bring up the question of why not all three, which we'll look further into later. That said, not all votes went this smoothly. Something must have shifted public perception of them, which we can see in the next vote, the most controversial one of them to date. It was the vote between the Moobloom, the Isolager, and the Glow Squid. Moobloom's would have spawned in flower forests, had some sort of interaction with bee mobs, and had come with a new type of flower, the Buttercup. This mob was already featured in the then-active game Minecraft Earth, which was a spin-off mobile game that is absolutely worth a future video. So be sure to subscribe so you can see it when it comes out. The Isolager was intended to be an Illager variant, this one with magical ice powers. This mob was originally from Minecraft Dungeons, so we had a decent understanding of what behaviors it may have had. Finally, the Glow Squid, another mob from Minecraft Earth. This mob was promised to spawn in dark areas and illuminate them. However, it was later stated that they wouldn't actually emit light. At least not yet. But before the polls even opened, the massively followed Minecraft YouTuber and streamer known as Dream had been urging his fan base to all vote for the Glow Squid. While likely just intended as a joke, this meant that when the Glow Squid barely beat out the Isolager in the final vote, many felt that we missed out on a far better mob due to what basically amounted to wide-scale troll voting. Dream has since apologized for his actions and taken responsibility for tampering with this mob vote. However, this of course can't undo the overall negative opinions generated through his involvement with the vote. And though the Glow Squid itself is generally still viewed as one of the worst mobs to ever win a vote, being literally just a squid reskin with absolutely no behavior differences, Mojang did their best to at least make its drop worthwhile. Both glowing text on signs and glow item frames are quite nice features for builders, and so it wasn't all a waste. However, while these features did 
did eventually end up being quite sweet, the overall negative sentiment around the vote, and Dream in particular, still remains. Coming off some bad press from the last one, with a lot on the line, the next mob vote was between the Glare, the Copper Golem, and the Allay. Though, that did little to shed the overall negative sentiment growing across the community surrounding mob votes. Sentiment Online suggested that the issue with this latest vote was that, arguably, none of the mobs in the vote were particularly interesting. The Glare got a whopping 11.2% of the vote, as it would have been a small, floating ghost creature that could alert players to the possibility of mobs spawning at a location due to too low a light level. Most people viewed this as not so useful a behavior. The Copper Golem was meant to be a small golem that would walk around and press buttons somewhat randomly. Again, public sentiment was just not there. It didn't seem interesting. And of course, the LA, which eventually won, was the rather cute, flying-friendly creature that can be given items to fly around to search for more of them. Kinda cool, definitely cute, but not particularly useful for the everyday player. This vote mostly suffered from a lack of a clear choice to vote for. None of the mobs themselves were all that interesting, and their abilities were even more lacking. Unlike some of the other votes, where people felt somewhat sad about not getting their pick, this one had more of a sentiment of just people not caring about any of them. And thus, it was a rather forgettable vote. Not having a mob to care about meant that when one eventually won, it ended up being somewhat of a lose-lose situation for the player base. At least, depending on who you ask. The next vote in history to happen was between the Sniffer, the Tough Golem, and the Rascal Mobs. The Rascal was described as an underground dwelling mob that would sort of play hide and seek with the player. Basically, if you found it three times, it would give you some sort of reward. Perhaps an iron pickaxe, like in the video initially showcasing it. Then, the Tough Golem. This would have been a small golem made of stone, with the ability to wear wool of various colors. It had been a glorified item frame, able to display an item given to it. If an item was dropped near it, it would path over to it, pick it up, and return to where it had been placed. This mob would sometimes behave as a block, and other times as an entity that walks around. And as you probably know, there was then the Sniffer, the winner of this mob vote. The Sniffer was described to be an ancient mob from a past long forgotten. You can find sniffer eggs in various chests throughout the world and use them to bring sniffers back from extinction. The sniffer was by far the most fleshed out mob in the vote, as many people memed that the tough golem was just an item frame and that the rascal was generally considered to be fairly useless, so neither mob stood much of a chance. The sniffer won this vote by a mile. Between copper and tough, these poor golems have had it rough. Now this vote taught us something about mob votes as a whole and the voting system in general. Because of how one-sided these votes could end up being due to mobs included in the vote being so unevenly interesting, the vote actually ended up being far less controversial than most others. To most, the best mob got added, and also the mob they voted for got added. This is potentially a lesson Mojang can learn from and implement into future votes. Purposely create one mob that you want to win, and then have the other two be fairly mediocre. And then everybody wins, or mostly everybody. Now whether they consciously made that decision or not, Mojang didn't seem to take that possible learning experience and apply it to the next mob vote. In fact, they seem to basically have done the exact opposite. This vote would be between three real-life animals, armadillos, crabs, and penguins. Now, the armadillo was described as being a savanna mob that could roll up into its shell when startled. It would drop scoot to use to craft wolf armor that could protect your puppers. And as for the mobs that didn't win, the penguin would spawn on stony shores, could both walk around and swim, and could speed up players' boats when around them. And of course, finally, the crab, which would spawn in the mangrove swamps, and could potentially be farmed to get a crab claw item from them that would allow blocks to be placed and broken from longer distances. The general community reaction to this vote was rather split. For the most part, except for the cuteness factor, most viewed the penguin as highly redundant, as it essentially did the same thing as the dolphin. Now, that leaves the main split being between the armadillo and the crab, which, as we've seen, generally causes the biggest rifts in the community. The main arguments made were basically that building is a core aspect of the game, so the crab's extended reach would be highly useful. Others brought up that the wolf armor would be pretty much useless, as wolf's AI is the main issue that gets them killed, and thus usually left at home when players go out to adventure. Not necessarily a lack of armor. If you were only looking online at the general public opinion for this vote, it would have seemed like the crab was going to easily win. However, that wasn't how it played out. When those final results came in, the armadillo 
rather handedly won the vote. This highlighted the pretty drastic thought process differences between the older fan base of the game and the younger, likely not internet using fan base of players. With the older players wanting a new building tool and the younger ones, at least likely, more interested in giving their pets some cool new armor. This vote in particular really set off a different type of crowd. The why not all three group were out in full force during this one, being very vocal about their disdain for the voting form. Some Mojang developers initially snapped back with some quickly deleted tweets, explaining their problems with the trending question. This was because Mojang was working on an official response. Here are the key takeaways from it, which closely match what the developers stated in a bit more of a polite way. But I think the problem is we started having ideas that people really got attached to. They want all three because they don't want to miss out on the possibilities. And I think the problem is it comes across as though like we have all three ready to go already. They're already designed, they're already coded, they're already like fully polished features. And we're just like waiting to press a button on only one of them. And then we're going to throw out the other two. So from this we can see that Mojang is aware of the issues, but note some flaws in the logic of the why not all three argument. Adding anything to a game is super complex. It needs to fit into the ecosystem. We need to um, reach a certain quality for all different ways you play, like if you play on a console, if you play on touch, on PC, Bedrock yeah. and Java. Mojang is highly selective with their quality control, which slows development time but ensures a more polished Minecraft across all platforms. This official Mojang response matches what the developers had initially responded with. The developers had mentioned that to develop extra features would require sacrificing something else. They went into detail on how in-depth design decisions are at Mojang. Having multiple rounds of art remakes, then needing to be developed for both Java Edition and Bedrock, which use different programming languages and sometimes can't have the same features across both. Whew. While the armadillo winning already disappointed a large amount of players, the snapshot introducing it justified the disappointment. The armadillo itself was actually fine, maybe a little boring, but it did what it was described to do. However, the scoot obtaining mechanic was incredibly underwhelming. Basically, you would take a brush and get a scoot every right click, making them incredibly easy to obtain. It of course had no drop on death, as Mojang typically no longer adds death drops to real life animals and hasn't for years. The main disappointment though was in the wolf armor itself, which was somehow less useful than anticipated. Exactly like horse armor, it gives a 30% damage reduction to your wolf. This means that your wolf can now survive a creeper explosion. Oh, wait, actually, no, it can't. And of course, your wolf will still take a dive into lava from time to time anyways. No amount of armor is going to save it from that. Thus, with all this in mind, this was by far the most disappointing mob vote to date when it came to the community's opinion. Luckily, this wasn't the end of the story. Mojang took the feedback and completely reworked wolf armor to be far more useful. Now, instead of acting as regular armor, it will instead absorb all incoming damage in exchange for losing during ability. Your wolf will essentially be invulnerable while the armor lasts. This change fixed all the issues the community seemed to have with wolf armor. Your pupper could now survive a creeper. A great change to solve all... Th uh, oh, it, it still jumps into lava. As more snapshots released, the overall sentiment did improve, but at least directly following the vote, this had been by far the most upsetting mob vote to date. One interesting factoid worth briefly mentioning was that there was a vote we skipped over in this video. That being the Minecraft China mob vote, which ultimately got the panda added to the game. Not much can really be found on public reception of this vote due to how split the Chinese media is from the rest of the world. However, what we do know is that they had the opportunity to pick from a large list of mobs, those being the deer, a golden monkey, pink dolphins, crocodiles, and of course, the panda. And it's no surprise that the panda won by a huge margin, given how iconic the animal is in terms of its association with the region of China. So where does all this leave us when it comes to the future of mob votes? Mojang has made no indication that they plan on stopping these votes, so we likely will continue seeing the community all come together every year to be angry. However, it is possible that Mojang takes a look back at previous votes and comes up with a different approach to these votes. Maybe one that will leave less people angry. Do they intend potentially come up with one good mob and two lame ones? Do they introduce three mobs but say that they'll all be added, akin to what they did for the biome? 
out. Only time will tell, but for now it seems that they have yet to crack the code on how to do these votes. And that's the overall story of the Minecraft mob vote. We'll see you next year for when we're all grumpy over the new one.